Morning everyone, let's have a look at our learning for Wednesday, 10th of June. So as we normally do, we're going to start with our reading. And again, we're going to be carrying on with chapter 3 of Matilda. And again, concentrating on those mixed vipers as part of our revision. So first question that we've got for today. Why do you think Mr Wormwood stayed very silent? So let's find that in the text where he does stay very silent and just read uh, what was happening before that. So this is obviously where he's got back home. He's, got, he's had the hat stuck in his head um, all day. So if we go back slightly, it says he looked ridiculous. So we can start to infer that actually... He's quite quiet because he's feeling a bit embarrassed, really, about the whole situation. He's had to wear the hat all day on his head. Um, so my answer to this one would be, I think that Mr Worm will stay very silent because he was embarrassed. I think he was embarrassed because the text says he looked ridiculous. So that implies he would have felt a, a little bit silly. OK, so that would be my answer for that. Again, uh, we don't fully know why he was quiet that day, but um, it gives us some idea as to why he was. Okay, so if you pause the video, see if you can define spluttered. So let's give a definition to spluttered then. Um, again, best thing to do is find it in the text. Um, and in this context, he's talking about, this is where Matilda's talking about um, a story about superglue um, that she, about a boy who got his uh, finger stuck up his nose. And Mr. Wormwood or Matilda's dad quickly uh, asked the question of what happened to him. Um, so it implies that he's a little bit concerned um, about what might happen to him because he obviously got super glue on his head. So with this one, I would answer it. Um, in the context of this. Um, so in the context, spluttered means to say something very quickly and just clarify why he's speaking quickly in this one. So speaking really quickly because he was scared about the story Matilda was telling him. So have a go at those mixed viper guys for chapter three of Matilda. Uh, and again, make sure you're answering as best you can in as uh, full sentences uh, as much as possible. So onto our maths and we're going to continue with our shape and today we're looking at properties of 3D shapes or features of 3D shapes uh, if you like. So you can see on, let's just define what a 3D shape is, you can see on our screen now you've got a 2D shape and a 3D shape, just uh, make sure you know which one is which. So on the left we've got that 3D, uh, sorry, on the left we've got that 2D shape, and on the right we've got that 3D shape. And as it says up there in purple, the 2D shape has a length and it has a width. Now in the context of this one, it's a square, so the length and width are actually the same. Um, and if we move on to the 3D shape, which is actually a cube, so it um, has the face, uh, one face is a square. Uh, it's got the length, it's also got the width, actually 2D shape, but it's also got a depth to it. Okay, so that's three uh, different dimensions. So that's where that idea comes from. Uh, 2D has two measurements, uh, dimensions, and three. It's got an extra one with a depth. So let's look at the different uh, vocabulary that we might come across today in terms of properties of 3D shapes. First one you can see there, we've got this cuboid in front of us, and we've got an we've got an edge, and that's where two of the faces meet. We've got a corner or vertex, um, or more than one vertex of vertices. So this could be where uh, three edges meet, could be where two edges meet actually. Um, And then you've got your face. So that is your 2D shape. So in the one that uh, that 
diagrams pointed to there is actually a rectangle, isn't it, uh, as part of our cuboid. So just to recap, edges where two uh, faces meet, the vertex is basically your corners, uh, vertices is more than one uh, corner, and your face is the 2D shape that makes up the 3D shape. So what we're going to do for the next few slides is we just have a see if we can work out the names of these 3D shapes. So between each slide, if you pause the video and see if you can name each of the shapes. Okay, so this one must be this is the cone. Uh, it actually has two faces, um, and. only one edge with um, one vertices. Okay, this one. Okay, that's uh, a cube. Okay, pause the video again, have a go at this one. And why don't you got it was the cuboid. This one hopefully you can see that uh, is actually a 3D shape. You've got the little um, sun and shadow marks on that, but that would be a sphere. It's starting to get a little bit trickier now. So we've got a square-based pyramid. So you can see you made up of made up of a square at the bottom and four triangles. Getting slightly trickier. You can see you've got that pentagon front and you've got then some rectangles around the side. So pentagonal prism, anything with rectangles um, between two shapes creates a prism. So same, it looks like a tent or a Toblerone. You've got triangular prism. Out. Slightly trickier one, not to prism because got no rectangles on this one. That's got a special name. It's called a tetrahedron. And getting slightly trickier with these now. That's an octahedron. So very much like so it's two square-based pyramids basically uh, stuck together. And then finally, we've got a dodecahedron, which we won't really, you don't really need to necessarily know that one in too much detail, but it's just interesting to see the different types of shapes. Okay, so in the next um, little clip, there is going to be a video coming up um, for you just to give you a better idea of the properties and identifying the properties of 3D shapes. <laughs> <laughs> three dimensional or 3D shapes are shapes that take up space. They have three dimensions length, width, and height. The world is made up of 3D shapes. They are all the things we can hold. Your book is a 3D shape. So is your soccer ball. As well as your birthday presents. Can you see how they each take up space? There are some features that are common across three-dimensional shapes. These features include faces, edges, and corners. The flat surfaces of a shape are called faces. No, not that type of face. The edge of a 3D shape is the line where two of its surfaces meet. And the corner is where two or more edges meet. A corner can also be called a vertex. The faces of 3D shapes 
often contain 2D shapes that you may already know. Maybe you can recognize some of these 2D shapes as we go through a few examples. Here are some three-dimensional shapes and their features. This shape is a cube. A cube has six faces that are identical, 12 edges and eight corners. All of the faces, edges and corners are the same size and length. Can you see how each face of the cube is a square? This shape is called a rectangular prism. A rectangular prism has six faces, 12 edges and eight corners. It's very similar to the cube, except instead of all the faces being squares, they're rectangles. The opposite faces of a rectangular prism are always the same size. This shape is a triangular prism. A triangular prism has five faces, nine edges, and six corners. Triangular prisms have two faces that are triangles and three faces that are rectangles. The two triangle faces are always the same size. However, some 3D shapes have more than just flat surfaces. Some have curved surfaces. But we don't call them faces because faces are always flat. This shape is called a cylinder. A cylinder has two circles on each end that are the same size with a tube in the middle. It has two flat faces and one curved surface. The cylinder also has two edges, but no corners. Remember, a corner is where two or more edges meet. In a cylinder, there are no corners because its two edges do not meet. This is a cone. Not an ice cream cone, unfortunately, but it is the same shape. A cone has a circle at its base and a point at the other end. It has one flat face, one curved surface, one edge around its base, but no corners. This unique shape is a sphere. It's perfectly round, just like a ball. This means it has no flat faces, no edges and no corners, just one curved surface. How unique is that? That's what makes a sphere the perfect shape for a ball. It rolls around easily in any direction and you can kick it without banging your toe on a sharp corner. Now that you know some three-dimensional shapes, perhaps you can spot a few examples of them in your classroom or outside in the playground. So hopefully that was useful, that little video there, um, just to recap those properties of shapes. And don't forget to have a keep going with those times table rock stars. So on to our writing today, and again, focusing on our spag. And today, yesterday we looked at suffixes, today we're looking at 
prefixes. So they are going to be um, going at the beginning of the word today. So today these are the prefixes that we're going to be looking at. Uh, D-E, D-I-S and M-I-S. So remember the prefix goes at the beginning of the word. So we're just going to match these uh, root words, which is on the right. So qualify here and bug to the prefix. And again, the best way to do these is to read the prefix with each of the root words and see if it sounds right. So if you pause the video and have a go at that, see if you can work out which ones go with which. So, as I said before, so strategy for this, uh, start with a suffix, so start with that D, say each of the root words with that and see if it sounds right. So D qualify, D here and D bug. So D bug sounds right to me. And then we start with that dis, so disqualify, dis here. So disqualify sounds right, which leaves us with miss here. Okay, so nice and easy, great little strategy. Um, it should sound right when you read them together properly. Okay, so if you pause the video, you can have a go at this. You just need to circle the word that means not like okay so you've got uh, samantha disliked the roast dinner uh, she had had at a friend's house because she didn't like the gravy or the peas so that dis uh, creates a negative uh, for the root word so rather than liking something if you dislike it it creates that negative so you didn't like it Okay, so again, uh, you can have a go at this one if you pause the video. We've got to com uh, complete the sentence below using a word from the word bank. So we've got uh, those four words already have their prefixes attached, and we just need to put uh, one of those words into our sentence so that it makes sense. So again, best thing again to do with this is read the whole thing um, with each of those words in and see which one sounds uh, correct. So, Jamie's mother wanted to debate the vegetables, that doesn't sound right. Jamie's mother wanted to mislay the vegetables, doesn't sound right. Um, Jamie's mother wanted to defrost the vegetables before dinner, but she couldn't find them. That one sounds about right, so I would probably go with defrost on that one. Okay, and then slightly trickier with this one, you just need to create a sentence from those words okay you can only use the words below though okay so hopefully you've had a go at that one um, answers for these there's two possible answers you've got Amy misheard what the teacher said or the teacher misheard what Amy said two options there Okay, so in the next uh, video clip, as before, there's a little bit more information about prefixes just to help you uh, and before you start your tasks. Prefixes A syllable or a word part added to the beginning of a word is called a prefix. A prefix has a meaning but it is not a word. For example, disconnect, imbalance, incorrect, un happy. Word parts dis, im, in and un are prefixes that mean not or the opposite of. Remember, a prefix can change the meaning of a word. Some antonyms are formed by adding prefixes to words.